Ten years before the Pixel 6, there was another milestone Android device, also developed in close partnership with Samsung, that represented a huge leap forward for the platform. This is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, or the G-Nex as it was affectionately called at the time. It launched us over a decade ago along with Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. But wait a minute, why are we talking about this random phone from a decade ago? Well, the GeneX and its software set the stage for a golden age of Android phones in the early 2010s, and it's a phone with an interesting story of its own. Like 2010's Nexus S, the Galaxy Nexus was a collaboration between Samsung and Google, which was quickly rising to a dominant position in the smartphone market. A Samsung Galaxy was fast becoming the default choice for anyone who didn't want an iPhone. For Google, it was the third Nexus phone to come to market and the first to offer 4G LTE connectivity, at least in the US. For Samsung, it straddled the Galaxy S2 and S3 release cycles, borrowing design cues from both of those models. But this was a Galaxy as well as a Nexus, and the front-loading of that Samsung brand gave it extra prominence at the time. Visually, the most striking feature of the Galaxy Nexus was what wasn't there. It was the first Android phone to do away with buttons on the front face of the device. Back then, pretty much every Android phone included capacitive or physical keys for navigation. On the GeneX though, these were replaced by back, home and recent apps keys in the software as part of a navigation paradigm that would stick around all the way through until gesture navigation was introduced in Android 9. The new Recents navigation key had previously debuted on tablets with Android 3.0 Honeycomb, but in Ice Cream Sandwich it made multitasking on phones far quicker and easier than ever before. The move to a buttonless front face gave the GeneX a very clean appearance from the front, the only blemish in its curved glass being the earphone speaker up top. On the rear, the phone was basically a larger, curvier Galaxy S2. A wedge-shaped area down below housed much of the PCB, as well as USB and headphone ports, while the removable back panel was furnished in the same hyperskin textured plastic as the S2. That is, unless you happen to work for Google. Google employees were given special Galaxy Nexuses like this with these googly app icons on the battery door. Not gonna lie, I actually prefer the feel of the regular retail back panel to the exclusive Googler version, which in person is rather slimy feeling, especially after 10 years of use. Either way, for the time, the Galaxy Nexus's hardware was pretty nice, albeit in an extremely plasticky way. It was 2011 and plastic was the default choice for most Android phone manufacturers, but as such, this phone feels lightweight in a way that you just don't get with the giant metal and glass phones of today. And as the bare-bones front face of this phone might suggest, the software was far more important than the underlying hardware specs. Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich was a complete visual and structural redesign for Google's OS, introducing the new hollow design language and the Roboto font that's still in use on most Android phones today, along with a sci-fi inspired turquoise color palette. Holo was the brainchild of Matthias Duarte, who joined Google in late 2010 and has led the company's design efforts over the past decade. We asked ourselves for the first time, what is the soul of Android? We wanted simple typographic layouts with plenty of white space, eliminating lines and boxes and unnecessary decoration. And we wanted to imbue everything with subtle animation and delightful flourishes to really make Android come alive. The new UI impressed at the time on Samsung's latest HD Super AMOLED displays, one of the first high-density OLEDs in a smartphone. Samsung held back its tip-top displays for the original Galaxy Note, but still, the vibrant colors and deep blacks of this panel were a great fit for ICS and Holo. If I had to pick a word to sum up Holo in 2011, I'd say mature. It was a more thoughtful, grown-up Android as opposed to the mishmash of design elements on the average Android phone at the time. A lot of the icons were still pretty skeuomorphic in nature, the camera app was still a detailed old-fashioned camera, the gallery was still a photo frame, but between the colours, the animations and the typography, this just felt ultra-modern and far more slick than anything I'd used previously. Although Samsung and Google collaborated very closely on the GeneX, the team actually chose not to use a Samsung processor in this phone. Instead, they opted for a more open-source-friendly Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 chip. Ironically, the use of an OMAP chip would ultimately backfire and cut this phone's lifespan short, leaving phones like the Galaxy Nexus without an upgrade path past Android 4.3. The GeneX was also pretty unique in late 2011 for not including an SD card slot. It did come with either 16 or 32 gigs of internal storage though, which was rather roomy for the time. Still, the lack of expandable storage was a common criticism back then, at a time when pretty much everyone expected to be able to cheaply and easily add more storage as they needed. And yeah, this is a 2011 Android phone, so there is indeed still a removable battery. You've also got these pogo pin attachments on the side for use with a dock, though that dock didn't launch until almost six months after the phone went on sale. 
Unboxing it for the first time in late 2011, the Galaxy Nexus felt ridiculously quick. To be fair though, this was during the era of pervasive Android lag on a lot of phones, and looking back at this thing now on the original Android 4.0 firmware, it's clear it's skipping frames left and right, even doing basic things like scrolling through home screens, and it's not getting anywhere near a fluid 60 frames per second. The upgrade to Android 4.1 Jelly Bean in summer 2012 helped iron out those performance kinks thanks to Google's so-called Project Butter. Get it? Because it's buttery smooth. In any case, the Galaxy Nexus on Android Jelly Bean was a far better experience than the original firmware simply because of that much smoother performance. Battery life was nothing special though, even on the 3G HSPA version that I used back in the day. If you used the 4G LTE Galaxy Nexus on Verizon in the US, then you'll know that battery life was even rougher on that version of the phone, often struggling to reach a full day of use even with the larger battery and thicker body of that version of the phone. And to add insult to injury, Verizon users also got slower updates because of the carrier certification process, so one of the main draws of using a Nexus phone didn't apply to the main version of this phone that was sold in the US. The Galaxy Nexus's camera was also a very mixed bag. Google highlighted the Nexus's zero shutter lag photography and add some promo videos, but even by 2011 standards, its 5 megapixel rear shooter took fairly dull low resolution photos. You see here the difference a decade makes in smartphone photography. In all fairness though, not all of these photos are terrible, but the real difference you see is the complete lack of decent post processing or HDR features to make up for the pretty dismal dynamic range of this sensor. With this camera, in a lot of situations, you basically had to choose between an overexposed sky or an underexposed landscape. And while the front-facing camera of this phone allowed Google to pioneer face unlock long before the likes of the iPhone X, that feature worked about as reliably as you would expect. Let's see what happens when Anand tries to unlock my phone. Nope, that's not going to happen. But when the phone sees me... Oh, really? Are you going to be like that? <laughs> no. Regardless, the Galaxy Nexus was still really popular among diehard Android fans. This was a Nexus, after all, with guaranteed day one updates to future Android versions. A huge deal when platform updates for other phones could take six months or more to arrive. And it boasted untarnished straight from Google stock Android software at a time when heavy, ugly manufacturer skins were the norm. Sure, you'd have to deal with crummy battery life and a not great camera, but to a lot of us early Android nerds, that didn't matter. The GeneX's software and experience was just that good. I was one of those early Android nerds who was smitten with the GeneX a decade ago. In my original review of the phone way back then, I said the Galaxy Nexus is the Android phone that you want to own in 2012. One company that wasn't a huge fan, however, was Apple. At the height of the early 2010 smartphone wars, the Galaxy Nexus quickly became a target for Cupertino's lawyers, who sought to establish the phone as infringing upon Apple's patents in an effort to shut down the broader Android ecosystem. Apple threw the kitchen sink at this lawsuit, attempting to prove Google infringed on everything from slide to unlock to on-device search. As a result, the phone was actually briefly banned in the US in mid-2012, following a court-granted injunction before swiftly returning to sale shortly after certain software features were tweaked. For a brief time though, because of legal shenanigans, the phone was pulled from sale in the US and it just wasn't possible to buy it. Apple failed in subsequent attempts to halt sales throughout 2012 and into 2013, and by that time the GeneX had already been replaced by the LG Made Nexus 4. But what about using a Galaxy Nexus today? Well, it's kind of a non-starter on any of the official firmware because it's just so old. Even adding a Google account can be problematic, leading to crashes in the Play Store, so once again we have to look to custom firmware to make this phone usable in 2022. The Galaxy Nexus is a Nexus, so unlocking it for use with custom firmware is as simple as typing a few commands into a terminal window. The most recent, most usable custom ROM I was able to find was the Android 6 based Lineage OS 13. That's still six years out of date, but more usable in 2022 than any of the alternatives. Unfortunately, unlike the Galaxy S2, we're not going to be able to get anything as recent as Android 11 running on this device. Lineage OS 13 is a pretty bare-bones Android 6 Marshmallow experience, with a very early material design type interface. I also wasn't able to get Google Apps up and running on this ROM because of a lack of space in the system partition. There are ways to repartition things so you can fit more on the system partition, but that's a bit more involved than I want to get with this 10-year-old Galaxy Nexus and a battery that lasts barely two hours. As for the basic Marshmallow software, it runs pretty well, in fact better than the official firmware. You wouldn't want to use this as your daily driver, but if you were forced to, it pretty much does the basics and performs a lot better than I was expecting. 
So that's the Samsung Galaxy Nexus 10 years on. This phone didn't sell in huge numbers, nor did it enjoy a particularly long lifespan. But it nevertheless stands out as a high point in the early growth of the Android ecosystem. Without the Genex and Ice Cream Sandwich, there would have been no Galaxy S3 or HTC One or LG G series. Ultimately, the third Nexus was popular among the Android faithful for many of the same reasons as the Pixel 6 Pro is today. It offers pure Google Android software and quick performance, backed up by some of the best Samsung sourced hardware of the time. In the decades separating these two phones, Google's learned a lot. And so many of the problems that sank the Genex are basically non-issues on Android today. Starting with the first Pixel, Google put photography front and center in a way that it really wasn't with any of the Nexus phones with the possible exception of the Nexus 6P. And with Google's own tensor processor in the Pixel 6, it gives it maximum control over how long its phones are supported. Plus, using a Pixel 6 on Verizon means you're not waiting six months longer for vital Android updates. Still, the Galaxy Nexus remains one of those classic Android phones that conjures up a lot of nostalgia in those of us that used it. So be sure to share your own memories of the Galaxy Nexus down in the comments and subscribe to Android Central right here so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.